so today I just want us to look at uh, this type of probability distribution, which are uh, discrete and continuous. So basically, under this unit, I say we will be introduced to the concept of random variables and the different types of uh, special discrete and continuous probability distribution, as well as their practical applications. Okay, so basically, uh, at the end of the day, what we expected to know about this unit is that uh, we need to be able to distinguish between discrete random variables from continuous random variables, and also to be able to calculate and apply, apply discrete and continuous probability distributions, and also understand the application of special discrete and continuous probability distributions. Okay? So now, the contents uh, will focus on discrete probability distributions and these are some of the types of uh, discrete probability distributions. So we have binomial, Poisson, hypergeometric, geometric, and negative binomial. Then under continuous probability distribution, we have normal, exponential, uniform, uniform, gamma distribution, and Weibull distribution. Okay. So to start with, we need to understand what a random variable is. Okay. We need to understand what a random variable is. So now. Here they are saying to appreciate and understand the concept of discrete and continuous probability distribution, it is important first to define and discuss random variables. So random variables can be defined as a numerical descrip uh, description of the outcome of an experiment. Thus, random variables associate numerical values with each possible experiment outcome. Random variables can either be discrete or continuous depending on the numerical values the random variables assumes. Okay, so when we are uh, talking of random variables, random variables, we assign them different uh, numbers depending on the outcome of an experiment. Okay, for example, let's say you can define your random variable to be the number of times when you toss a coin, you're going to experience a tail. Or you can assign your random variable to be the number of observations that you're going to observe at the end of the day when you toss your your coin maybe three times okay so we can tend to assign our random variable in different ways so now basically we have discrete and continuous so what do you mean when we say discrete and what do you mean when we say continuous probability distributions so for discrete random variables we are saying that this is a random variable that can assume either a countable number of values or an infinite sequence of values in the finite case, the assumed countable values terminate. Okay, so for example, those probabilities that you are able to count, here they've given us an example of a countable value which are terminated, meaning that they have an end. Let's say maybe of numbers one up to twenty, one numbers one up to six. So those values which you can able to count, they fall under discrete random variables. Okay, sometimes in the countable infinite case. So in the case whereby your values, let's say, from 1 up to infinity, you can't count infinity, okay? It's endless, but you can still count. Those values falls under discrete random variables, okay? So here are some of the examples of discrete random variables. The number of students in economics class, which is statistics, 23, So you are able to count the number of students in this course, okay? The number of days in a week, you are able to count. The number of visitors to your room at dinner. Those guys who come to dive at lunchtime. Okay? So that, so long you are able to count, meaning that distribution falls under uh, discrete random variables. Okay? So here we can say, we can conclude that discrete random variables observation are mostly counts. Okay? So basically, when they give you an experiment, 
where you are able to observe accountable events just know that it falls under discreet okay then mr d, mr. d. yes please mr. D. Yes, please. 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 To distinguish between discrete and continuous random variables, first to define what a continuous random variable is, we are saying that this is a random variable that may assume any numerical value in an interval or collection of intervals. Examples of continuous random variables include weight. We know that egg, uh, when you are trying to assign weight, x, meaning the value of the weight, is supposed to be greater than zero. Amount of rainfall, you can't count the amount of rainfall, but you can measure. Okay? The distance covered, you can't count the distance which has been co covered, but you can only measure. The length of time, the length of time between visitors to your room. So if you're looking at time, you're looking at the distance covered, the amount of rainfall, things that are not countable, they fall under continuous random variables. Okay? Now, in conclusion, we're going to say, x is a continuous random variable if x may assume values in some interval. So in the case where you're experiencing an interval, okay, in a case where you're experiencing an interval, that falls under continuous random variables because you are not able to count. Okay, so now, uh, here is just a summary to say a random variable x whose values are obtained by counting falls under discrete random variable. And a random variable x whose values are obtained by measuring, it falls under continuous random variable. Okay? So now, discrete probability distributions. Now let's, look, let's start with the discrete probability distributions. Okay? So we are saying that, okay, just a minute, let me try to do this. Let me try to do this. Sorry, sorry. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, 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 Mr. yes Mr. D. Okay, okay. Ah, sorry, the pen that I was using, it's very faint. Okay, so here is an exercise. Let's try to discuss how can we distinguish between continuous and discrete random variables. Okay, so the question reads, classify each random variable as either discrete or continuous. The first one, the number of arrivals at an emergency room between midnight and 6 a.m. Is this a random or a discrete? Uh, is, it, is this a discrete or a continuous random variable? It's a discrete. Why? Because you are able to count. Sorry? Because you are able to count the number of arrivals. Okay, you are able to count the number of people who are coming, right? No. Okay, it's a discrete, yes. Then the duration of the next outgoing telephone call from a business office. The duration of the next outgoing telephone call from a business office. Is this a continuous or a uh, discrete? That's continuous. That's continuous. Okay, someone else? There was a different answer. <laughs> Kukenga. Okay. Okay. This is a continuous. Why are you saying it's a continuous uh, random variable? Because when you when you look at duration, it's time. Yeah. True. Okay, the next one reads the number of applicants for a job. Excuse me. It's this. So oh, try to speak up. I can't get you. It's this.
depending on the number of outcomes that you might have, or you have an infinite set, but so long you are able to count, those probabilities are supposed to be greater or equal to zero. And when you sum them, all the values from one up to infinite, okay, when you try to sum them, the, all the probabilities are supposed to give you one. Okay, so whenever you are conducting a pro uh, probability distribution function, what you need to know is that uh, when you add all the probabilities, you're supposed to get a one. Okay, because we know that when we say probability is equal to one, we mean certain, certainty of an event. Okay, probability can, uh, can never be greater than one or less than zero. Okay, so here is an example. So we are saying, record the experiment of tossing a coin twice. Then find... I have a question. Yes. On the first point there. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Sorry. On your first point, point where you say f of x, 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 x i is equal to p x i greater than or equal to zero of over this of i. Does it mean even numbers like above one? So what we are saying is... This x is a random variable. So a random variable, we are saying it's any numerical value of the outcome after conducting an experiment. So the outcome can be a set of infinite, meaning that you can have observation, let's say maybe from 1 up to infinity. Okay? You are looking at the, uh, the result or the outcomes. So for the outcomes, it can be numbers from 1 up to infinity. No wonder we are saying that for all values of i, which is the random variable, the probability is supposed to be greater or equal to zero. Because the number of random variables, they will start from one. The x here simply means the outcomes. So the outcomes, yes, the outcomes can be thousand, can be one million, whichever number can be infinite. Because you are looking at just, just the outcomes. So the outcomes, you can't be restricted to say that the outcome is supposed to be one. No. Depending on the experiment that you are conducting, the outcome can take any other, uh, any other set, which can be, like for discrete, that set is supposed to be countable. Okay. So I have an example here. At record the experiment of tossing a coin twice, now find the probability distribution. So we know that when you conduct... When we toss a coin twice, it's either, like our sample space will be this. The first outcome can be head, or the second outcome can also be head. Or the first outcome can be head, then the second can be tail. Or maybe the first outcome can be a tail, and the second can be head. Or the first can be a tail, and the third, and, and the second time can be a tail. Okay? So these are the possible outcomes when you toss a coin twice. Now, Let's assign our random variable. So, in this case, we are saying, let the random variable x be the number of heads observed in the coin tossing experiment. Therefore, the random variable x can take the following values. Okay? So, in this case, our random variable has been defined to be the number of heads observed. So, you go to this first outcome. How many times are you going to experience a head? Twice. This is the two here that we are seeing. Okay? Then the number of heads, here you can experience one, they are one. But in the case where your outcome, your first outcome is a tail and your second outcome is a tail, meaning you're not experiencing any head, okay? So that simply means that you, your random variable will be zero. This is where the zero is coming from. After tossing a coin twice, in the case where your outcomes are both tail tail, meaning that you're not experiencing any head. So our random variable, which has been defined to be the number of head observed. Since now we are not observing any head, no wonder we've assigned our random variable to be x equal to 0. Then in the case if our first uh, outcome was head, then the second was tail. We've just experienced one head. Or when the first outcome is a tail and the second is a head, we've just experienced one head. No wonder here we've assigned our random variable to be 1. But in the case when we experience, at both trials, we experience head, head, we've assigned our random variable to be 2. Okay? So now we are saying, we know that the number of sample size, it's 4, like the outcomes. We have 1, HH, HT, TH, and TT. This is the 
uh, number of sample size. Now, the probability of x is equal to x, therefore, is equal to what? So now we are trying to find the probability of these random variables that we've been given. Okay? So when x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, this simply means that when your number of heads observed is 0, so you experience, how many times did you experience the number of heads was equal to 0? This is when the, your first outcome and the second outcome were both tail tail. Okay? So in this case, it's this outcome. Tell tell. So when you experience tell tell, this outcome is one out of four outcomes. Okay? When x is equal to zero, we are looking at tell tell. So this is one out of four. So the probability of you experiencing no head is equal to one over four. Okay? Then the probability of you experiencing one head. For you to experience one head, it's either your first outcome was h and your second outcome was tail. Or your first outcome was tail and your second outcome was h, which is ht and th. So now the probability of x is equal to 1, it's 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4. Okay? So since you have 1, 1 there, it's just the same as saying 1 plus 1, which is 2, 2 over 4. Then when you try to simplify this, it will be 1 over 2. Okay? Then the probability, when we are saying x is equal to 2, x is equal to 2 meaning that when we observed both at both trials, we experienced a head. So, head, head. So, what? how many times did you experience head, head? It was just one. So, it would be one out of four. So, this becomes our what? Our PDF. Okay? So, now we are saying, then the probability distribution of the random variable x is. So, we can write our PDF to be something like this. When x was equal to zero, our probability was 0 0.25, which is 1 over 4. When x was equal to 1, our probability was half. When x was equal to 2, our probability was 0 0.25. Okay. So now, if we try to prove those conditions that we said for a PDF, these are supposed to hold. We said that uh, the values of x, the number of uh, random variables that we are going to assign, supposed to be greater or equal to 0. So if you can see here, you have a 0, you have a 1, you have a 2. So you can say, you can even see clearly to say that these values are greater or equal to zero. Okay? Then, we said that when you sum up all the probabilities, you're supposed to get a one. So let's try to add this. So when you say 0 0.25 plus 0 0.5 plus 0 0.25, it will give you a one. Every time, I mean always, you're supposed to get a one. In the case, if you're getting something less than one or you're getting something greater than one, just know that somewhere, somehow, you've made a mistake. Okay, that's under uh, PDF, uh, discrete probability distribution. Okay, then I have some questions eh, under the same PDF. Let me check. I have this example with me. The question reads, the probability function of a discrete random variables y is given by f of y is equal to c, the constant c, y to the power 2. For the values of y, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay? This is a discrete random variable, and this is our random variable y, which has been defined to be this outcome, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the question is, find the value of the constant c. Find the value of the constant c. So given this probability function, f of y is equal to c, y to the power 2, and, and these are our values for y. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Now the question is, find the value of the constant c. Okay? It's easy. So what we know is that eh, when we sum up all the values of y, okay, the probability of y is supposed to give us eh, 1. Okay? Taking up all the values of y, the probability of all those random variables is supposed to give us what? Eh? Supposed to give us 1. Okay? So, you can write it in this manner. So, you put the values of y, which is our random variable in this case. So, you have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, which will be given there. Okay? These are the values. Then our function is c, y to the power 2. So, now, let's start substituting. Okay? 
c y to the power 2. So when y is equal to 0, what will be the value of c? Or what will be the value of this uh, function f of y? When y is equal to 0, what will be the value of this function? So in, in, uh, in short, we are trying to substitute where this y we put 0. So 0 multiplied by c, it will just be 0, right? Mm -hmm. So this is the 0 that we are seeing here, okay? Then when we try to substitute a 1, it will be 1 squared. So 1 squared, it will just be 1. 1 times c, it will just be c, which is the c here, okay? Then if you put a 2, 2 to the power 2, it's a 4. 4 multiplied by c, it will be 4c, which is the, the 4c that you are seeing there. Then if you assign a 3, it will be 3 to the power 2, which is 9. 9 multiplied by c, it will be 9c, which is there, okay? Then 4, when you put 4 here, it will be 4 to the power 2, 16. 16 multiplied by c, it will be 16c. That will be the value of y. Uh, the value of f of y. Now, we know that when we sum up the probabilities of all the values that the random variables takes, we're supposed to get a 1. Okay? So, in short, when we add 0 plus c plus 4c plus 9c plus 16c, we're supposed to get a 1. So, you just add this and equate it to 1. So, 0 plus c is just c. c plus 4c, 5c. 5c plus 9c, 14c. 14c plus 16c, 30c is equal to 1. So to find the value of c, which is the constant, divide by 30, even this side by 30. So 30 by 30 cancels remain with c. c is equal to 1 over 30. So if you want, just try to put 1 over 30 here. Put 1 over 30, 4 multiplied by 1 over 30, 9 multiplied by 1 over 30, 16 multiplied by 1 over 30. Then try to add. It will give you 1. Okay, so every time you need to understand to say when I sum up all the values of the random variable for the probability which you've been given, you're supposed to get a 1. Okay, if you don't get a 1, just know that you've made a mistake. Okay, is that okay? Okay, is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Okay. <coughs> um, under cumulative distribution function, we are saying that let x be a random variable, the CDF or the distribution function of a random variable x denoted by capital letter F. Okay? For the PDF, it was denoted by a small letter F, F of x. But for the CDF, which is cumulative distribution function, it is denoted by capital letter F. So this CDF, which is denoted by F, is defined as the CDF, which is F of x, is equal to the probability of the values of x, which should be less or equal to the x, and this x is the random variable. For all real now, uh, values of x, which is the random variable, okay, and f of x is supposed to be equal to the values that takes from 1 up to x, or that pdf that you have, okay, I'll, I'll explain this, don't worry, then what we are saying here, for a discrete random variable, if you have probability, let's say, of interval a to b, okay, a less or, equal, less or equal to x, which is less or equal to b. If you want to find this probability, if you are using a CDF, which is a cumulative distribution function, it's not the same as saying uh, CDF of b subtract CDF of a. F of b subtract f of a. Okay? You understand this when you try to solve some examples. Okay. So, let's go back to our, our PDF. Okay, recall that the PDF of tossing a coin twice, when we assign our random variable to be the number of times that we are going to observe a head, we say that our random variable, it will take values 0, 1, and 2, and our probability was 1 over 4, 1 over 2, and 1 over 4. So now, if you are asked to find the CDF, which is the cumulative distribution function, this is the approach. 
okay so we are saying f of x which is a cdf is equal to probability of x less or equal to x which is a random variable we're supposed to take values from one up to x of the pdf that we have okay so this becomes our cdf this becomes our cdf meaning that if your values if your values where x is less than zero meaning that in the case where you are not observing a head okay it's a zero okay then for you less than zero simply means like you have a negative outcome okay which is impossible so now we are saying it's a zero we know that if, if you are using probability probability is equal to zero simply means that that event won't take place then probability of one meaning you are certain to say the event will take place right so in the case where your x is less than zero meaning our random variable is less than zero meaning that it's negative one okay so now there's no chances of you observing a negative one head it's not possible how can you have a negative one head it's either you have a zero or you have a number greater than zero okay but not a zero like not a negative value no wonder we are saying when x is less than zero you have a zero there then the probability of you observing a head between zero and less than one okay zero is less or equal to x less than one so in short we'll just go for zero for you the probability of you not observing a head it's when you experience a telltale okay so when you experience a telltale it was one over four okay then the probability of you observing uh, this was supposed to be there mm -hmm. the probability of okay there was a mistake here it was supposed to be one over two the probability of you for uh, one when we have a one there one less or equal to x less than two okay one less or equal to x less than two mean the probability of you observing a one it's supposed to be half here okay then the probability of observing up here when we say two less than or equal to x then less than uh let's say a three okay meaning that uh you are supposed to get uh one over four again okay then any value which is x greater than or equal to two supposed to be equal to one so whenever you are writing your pdf always remember that your PD, uh, your cdf i mean which is capital letter f of x supposed to start from zero and end up up to one okay and where are you going to get these values you get these values from the pdf that you are from solving okay which is this so when x was equal to zero we had one over four when x was equal to one we had one over two when x is equal to two we had one over four anything greater than anything greater than two it will still give us one that's what a cdf mean okay so now looking at the formal definition of a cdf we are saying a function f of x cap to f of x is a distribution function mm -hmm. which is yes sir mm -hmm. yes please um, um sorry to take you back sorry to take you back but my network is kind of breaking on my end so i'm a little bit lost on um what you're talking about like what's the yeah there and the other thing on top like the last thing i don't know if that's an equation i don't know this one yes like that part the function of x yeah okay uh, one thing that you need to understand about uh, the CDF, which is capital F of X, a CDF is being derived from the PDF. Okay, so under discrete probability distribution, we are saying that uh, for us to get a CDF, this CDF, which has been denoted by capital F and capital X there, it will take values which are less or equal to the values of the random variable. In this case, the random variable is being denoted by this monitor X which is just the, the summation of all values of the random variable from one up to x values of the random variable depending on the number of values that we have okay so this xi simply means the number of variables are uh, random variables so depending on the number of variables that we have for us to generate a cdf we'll take those values one up to x and sum them okay so now we are saying from the pdf that we had which is this for us to come up to come up with a cdf we'll just uh, present the work in this manner 
okay but what i'm saying is for a cdf we're just supposed to indicate a zero in the one okay meaning that we uh, when x this x simply means the random variable when the random variable of x is less than zero uh in the actual sense this simply means that you experiencing the number of heads which you can observe after tossing a coin twice will be less than zero meaning that you can have an experiment of observation of uh, observing a head of a negative value okay so what we mean is this is impossible like you can't have a negative outcome when you toss a coin it's either you experience a head or you experience a tail so it's either your value will be zero or your value will be one okay there's no way you can say that when i toss a coin i'll experience an outcome of negative value no wonder i say all random variables which are less than zero our f of x will be zero okay and since here we are assigning random variables from one up to two so meaning that all values which are greater than two when we assign them we're supposed to get a one because we know from here that when we add this one over four one over two one over four is supposed to get what supposed to get a half uh, a one when we add this we're supposed to get a one so meaning that anything that comes after two it will give you a one okay so this is the value x greater or equal to two it will give you one then these probabilities which are in between supposed to be one over four one over two and one over four again zero less or equal to x less equal to one we had one over four then uh then this one again was supposed to be one over two then one over four so that when you try to add the, at the end of the day it will take us back to one here so i'm saying here there was a mistake because if you try to add three over two this will give us something like uh one over two one over five and one over five we know is greater than one we can't have a probability which is of greater than one mm -hmm. so i'll try to solve an example with you i'm sure it will even make more sense okay so in case you are lost don't worry i'm sure with the example it will be much better okay so a formal definition of this cdf we are saying that a function f of x is a distribution function cdf for some random variable x if the following holds okay so taking limits of this random variable x when it's approaching negative infinity meaning that if you are considering numbers which are less than which are negatives in short your f of x is always equal to zero then limit as x approaches positive infinite meaning let's say starting from one going upward there whatever you're going to add you're supposed to get a one okay and if a is less than b if a is less than b then the probability of f of a is supposed to be less or equal to f of b okay then having a limit zero less than h as h is approaching zero this function when h uh, 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 will you can repeat on the on the second yeah on the second uh, yeah, function yeah. is it not the same with the, the first one yeah. is it the same with the first one? Yeah, okay okay let me limit uh, as x approaches negative right now Oh, okay okay so when x is up when h is approaching zero when this is approaching zero we we'll just consider the value of x so our pdf our cdf will be just f of x okay so okay mm -hmm. so the graphical presentation of the cdf can be represented using a what uh, a staircase situation which you can experience something like this now let me try to share uh, this Okay. Okay. Um I have an example 3 here. Example 3 reads the probability distribution for a random variable x is given by x which is a random variable takes the values of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and 6. 
okay in the probability when x is equal to 1 it's 0 0.1 when x is equal to 2 is 0 0.1 when x is equal to 3 0 0.2 when x is equal to 4 the probability is 0 0.4 when x is equal to 5 the probability is 0 0.15 when x is equal to 6 the probability is 0 0.05 okay now the question is find the cdf of x and the sketch its function find the cdf of x and the sketch its function then find the probability that x is greater or equal to 4 and find the probability that 2 is less than x less or equal to 4 so now i want you to understand this when you've been given a pdf okay when you've been given a pdf this is how our random variable has been defined to be the values of 1 up to 6 and these are the probabilities which have been assigned to these random variables so when you add all the probabilities you're supposed to get a 1 so just try to add 0 0.1 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.15 0 0.05 you're supposed to get a 1 if you're getting a 1 meaning that yes this is a correct pdf okay now for you to come up with a cdf which is cumulative distribution function to accumulate simply means more like to add okay cumulation okay so even in this case even in this case we are trying to to find the cumulative distribution function from this pdf okay so how are we going to approach this part okay so we are saying that this f of x which is our cdf is supposed to be equal to p taking the value of this and the random variable when x is the random variable in this case so our cdf of one okay considering that random variable which is one is just the same as taking the values of x less or equal to one okay so looking at the pdf that we have here our random variable has just been defined starting from numbers of one okay since we are uh, just having numbers starting from one meaning taking the values of x less or equal to one we we'll just have x is equal to what is equal to one then x is equal to one the probability of x is equal to one we've been told it's what 0 0.1 okay then f of 2 f of 2 is the probability that x is less or equal to 2 so the, for you to get the probability that x the probability that x is equal uh, is equal to 2 or less than 2 just the same as saying probability of 1 plus probability of 2 so you just add 0, uh, 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 okay so 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 which is 0 0.2 you do the same Proba f of 3 you add probability of 1 probability of 2 probability of 3 so it will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 which will be 0 0.4 then for probability of 4 uh, f of 4 for you to get f of 4 you just add 0 0.1 plus 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.4 which will be 0 0.8 okay which is that then f of 5 you add 1 2 3 4 up to 5 so when you add here it was 0 0.8 0 0.8 plus 0 0.15 it will give you uh 0 0.95 okay then from there when you add when you're trying to find f of six it will be probability of one adding up to six x is less so equal to six meaning one two up to six so when you try to add always your last value of f of x which is your cdf is supposed to give you one so these values that you are seeing here 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.8 0 0.15 uh sorry 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.8 0 0.95 and 1 this becomes your cdf which is cumulative distribution function or in short this is not even difficult you're not even supposed to do this i was trying to do that so that at least you can be able to see where these values were coming from but this is just as simple as saying for one since it's cumulative this is your starting point it will take this value for two you just add this plus that okay for three you add this this and that for four you add this up to that for five you add this up to five for six you add everything okay then when you sum them you're supposed to get a one so now to write as your cdf this becomes your cdf so you, to distinguish between a pdf and a cdf for cdf you're supposed to put capital f so x which is your random variable taking values from one up to six then your pdf uh, your cdf capital f of x so when x was equal to 1, 
our random variable was 0.1. When x was equal to 2, our random variable yeah, was probability was 0.2. When x was 3, our f of x was 0.4. When x was 4, probability was 0.8. When x is 5, probability is 0.95. When x is equal to 6, we are supposed to have a 1. Okay? So, remember, always for a CDF, you are supposed to get a 1. Because we simply mean that when you add all the probabilities that you've been given, you're supposed to get a 1. Okay? So, I don't know with your lecture, huh? but for us last year, we are told that upon doing this, when you present your work using this, you're supposed to conclude by using this kind of representation. Okay? You're supposed to draw it like this. So, this is simple. You're just using these values. Okay? So, what we are saying is, in the case where your random variable x, okay, is less than 1. So, in this case, we don't have anything less than 1. So, in the case where you have anything less than 1, meaning it will give us a probability of 0. This is where the 0 is coming from. Then you indicate 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, 0 0.8, 0 0.95, and a 1. Okay? So, values 1 less or equal to x, which is less than 2, to be 0 0.1. So, you just follow the pattern. Here, 2 wasn't included. You include 2 here. 2 less or equal to x, less than 3. Okay? Then, 3 wasn't included. You include 3 here. 3 less or equal to x, less than 4. 4 wasn't included, you include it here. 4 less or equal to x less than 5. 5 wasn't included, which is that. 5 less or equal to x uh, less than 6. 6 wasn't included, which is that. So any values that x will take, which are greater or equal to 6, it will give us a probability of 1. So there's no way you can say, maybe when x is equal to 7, what will be the value of, uh, what will be the value of this f of x? Okay, so it will still be 1. Anything greater than 6 will still give us 1 because we know that probability is equal to 1. Is that okay? Please then in the that again. Sorry. sorry. Which part are you? Which part is not clear? The last, the last part, part where, where you are grouping, grouping them. them. Where I was adding them? This part, this part where the intervals. intervals. Okay. So what I'm saying is, for the intervals for the uh, CDF, uh, if you can check your CDF here, you had values from 0 0.1, okay? And your random variable when x was equal to 1. So we are saying anything below 1, it will give you a CDF of 0. No wonder we are saying when x is less or when x is less than 1 we have a cdf of 0 here then this we just copy them the way it is 0 0.1 0 0.2 0 0.4 0 0.8 0 0.95 and a 1 so you start including this for example like in this case you're including 1 because it is where 0 0.1 is so you say the values of 1 less than x less than 2 you're not including 2 okay your f of x was 0 0.1 when you include 2 minus including 3 it as an interval it will be 2 less than me or equal to x less than 3 okay it's 0 0.2 okay then when you use 3 when you include 3 when you include 3 you're supposed to get 0 0.4 no wonder you're saying 3 less than x but less than 4 less or equal to x but less than 4 we're not including 4 so when we include 4 you're supposed to get 0 0.8 when we include 5 you're supposed to get 0 0.95 when we include 6 we're supposed to get a 1 and anything greater than 6 will give us 1. Now we are saying that probability x, all values that uh, x takes, which are greater or equal to 6, will give us a probability of 1. Okay? So, using a staircase, sometimes they will ask you to represent your work using a staircase. So, in the case, if you are using a staircase of your CDF, so you just assign the probabilities, which are the numbers of the CDF here. So, you can say, you know that a CDF is supposed to end up to 1. So you're supposed to have a 1 there. Depending how you're going to denote this. Maybe if you want, you can use 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. So long at the end of the day, you have a 1 there. Okay? Then, on your x-axis, you're supposed to take the values of the random variable. Okay? The values of the random variable. So in this case, our random variable, it was 1 up to 6. Which has been denoted like this. So, we know that 
when we consider this value, which is 6, when our random variable was 6, okay? When our random variable was 6. Okay, let's start with the 0 0.1. When our random variable was 1, okay? When our random variable was 1, using this interval, we are saying that 1 less or equal to x less than 2, meaning that 2 is exclusive. We are not including 2. No wonder, here we are saying, you close here, then you open. The open part, if you can remember, in first year, under sets, open uh, interval and closed intervals. We said in the case when you close the interval, you're supposed to shade. When you open, simply means you're not including the values. Okay? So the interval, when x was equal to 1, we are saying that it was 0 0.1. So 0 0.1 was somewhere there. So from here up to there. But we're not including 2. Okay? Then if we include 2, our PDF, our CDF was 0 0.2. Okay, when we include 2, our, P, our CDF was 0 0.2. So we'll go where there's 0 0.2, then you mark, you include 2 up to 3, but you don't include 3. Okay, then you check. When you include 3, what was your CDF? Your CDF was equal to 0 0.4. So you go where there's 0 0.4, four, uh, 3 was included, but 4 wasn't included. So you open. Then you check. Up to from 0 0.4, you had 0 0.8. Then 0 0.8 there, 4 was included, but 5 wasn't included. So you leave it open like that. Then you go for 0 0.95. 5 was included. So this is 5. 5 was included, but 6 wasn't included. Then from here, anything greater, starting from 6 or greater than 6, meaning going this side, okay, going to the infinite it will give us a probability of 1. So if you use a staircase, your value or your answer of the CDF will be something like this. So sometimes the question will be like, find the CDF and represent using the staircase. So in the case you're using a staircase, this is supposed to be your CDF. Okay? It's simple. You just get your intervals from here. Okay? You get your intervals from here. Then, since you're using this or equal to, meaning 2 was included, is less than 3. 3 wasn't included. Where it wasn't included, you just leave your interval to be open. Questions? Okay. Then the next part was asking us to find the probability that x is greater or equal to 4. The probability, that that the probability that x is greater or equal to 4. So to find the probability that x is greater or equal to 4, we have two approaches how we can solve this. If we look at our PDF, from the, we can get our answer from the PDF or we can get the, our final answer from the CDF. If we consider the PDF, when x is greater or equal to 4, okay, when x is greater or equal to 4, meaning that 4 is inclusive, so if 4 is inclusive, we simply means that we add the probability of x is equal to 4 plus probability of x is equal to 5 plus probability is equal to x is equal to 6. So now if you check your PDF, which is here, starting from 4, 5, and 6, just add 0 0.4 plus 0 0.15 plus 0 0.05, it will give you 0 0.6. Okay? When you try to add this, it will give you 0 0.6. The other way, for probability x is greater or equal to 4 by using a CDF, okay? By using a CDF, which is cumulative distribution function, we know that uh, when x is greater or equal to 4, it's just the same as finding the probability of 1 minus uh, those values which are less than uh, or equal to 3. We know that when we add the, uh, the probabilities of values which are less or equal to 3, plus the probabilities of values which are greater or equal to 4, we're supposed to get a 1. So to find the probabilities of x is greater or equal to 4, is just the same of saying 1 subtract the probability of x is less or equal to 3. Okay? So 1 minus, if you use a CDF, which is f of 3. So with a CDF, cumulative distribution function. So if you say f of 3, this f of 3 simply means you've added the values from 1, 2, and 3. This is what it means because it's a cumulative. Okay? So f of 3. So when you go to f of 3, under the CDF, f of 3, f of 3 was just 0 0.4. Okay? So if you check, when you go to your PDF, 
3 it was 0.2 but if you check the CDF 3 was 0 0.4 this simply means that you've added all the values from x which is 1 2 up to 3 so f is equal to 3 you have f 3 which is 0 0.4 then once subtract 0 0.4 you get 0 0.6 okay then the last part was asking to say probability 2 is less than x less or equal to 4 probability 2 is less than 6 less or equal to 4 so this is just the same as if you say 2 is less than x meaning this 2 you are not including 2 okay you are looking for values which are less or equal to 4 but greater than 2 okay so this is just the same as the probability of x is equal to 3 plus probability of x is equal to 4 so if you use your pdf x is equal to 3 it's 0 0.2 x is equal to 4, it's 0 0.4. Then when you try to add it, it will give you 0 0.6. Okay? Then when you try to use a CDF again, 2 less than x less or equal to 4. Is that the same as saying the largest number, f of 4, subtract the smallest, f of 2. So when you check your CDF, where f is equal to 4, when x is equal to 4, when x is equal to 4, here, it's 0 0.8. When x is equal to 2, it's 0 0.2. So when you say 0 0.8 subtract 0 0.2, you get 0 0.6. Okay? Are there questions? Okay. Okay. Uh, let me try to do this last part. Yeah. No, no. I have a question. Explain yes, the last part. part. Why do we f of 4 minus f of 2? Why? Come again, what's your question again? The last, the last why do we subtract f, 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 f of 4 minus f of 2? Aren't they part, part of that, of that, that, that the range? Okay. We are using a CDF. So for a CDF, this probability, we are looking for values which are less or less than x, but this x is supposed to be less or equal to 4. Mm -hmm. Okay, we are saying 2 is less than x. Okay? 2 is less than x. This simply means that x is greater than 2. But at the same time, this x is supposed to be greater or uh, supposed to be less or equal to 4. So looking at the values which are less or equal to 4 but greater than 2 is just the 4 and the 3. Okay? Looking for values which are less than 4 but greater than 2, it's 4 and the 3. So if you use the, your PDF formula, you just add the, the probability of 3 and the probability of 4, you get 0 0.6. But if you're using a CDF, for a CDF, for a CDF using an interval, you don't consider, let's say, 2 less x less or equal to 4, or 2 is less equal x less equal to 4, or 2 is less than x less than 4. Simply means the same, okay, for interval. So to find the probability which is in between, you have 2 and the 4, okay. So when you find the cumulative distribution of 4 meaning you have a probability of values from 1 up to 4 then when you subtract the number uh, the probability of values from 1 up to 2 you get the values which are between 4 and the 2 no wonder we are doing this f of 4 subtract f of 2 is that okay yes thank you, thank you. okay so uh, for continuous random variables, continuous random variables, we said for continuous random variables, these are random variables which cannot be counted, but we can only measure them. So even the approach of considering continuous random variables, it's very much different from those of discrete random variables. Okay, but one thing for all is that the function or the PDF f of x for a continuous random variable is supposed to be greater or equal to zero for all values of x. And also, for PDF, uh, for CDF, uh, I mean for discrete random variables, we are summing them. When you sum up all the values that x takes, we are equating them to one. So one thing that you need to know, the difference between the CDF and P, uh, the difference between discrete random variables and continuous random variables is that for discrete, you just sum up, you use summations, okay? But for 
continuous random variables, you use integration. Okay? So, we are saying that when we integrate all the values that x takes for the function f of x, when we integrate it, all the values of x, when we try to substitute, we're supposed to get a 1. Okay? For, for discrete, what we are saying is that eh, when you sum up, okay, when you sum up all the values of y, or when you sum up all the values of all the values of x, where is that example? Okay, it was starting from so, okay, yeah. So even just from here, when you sum up all the values of uh, y, when you just sum up, we're supposed to get a one. Okay, that's for discrete. Then for continuous, we are saying that instead of summing them, you are integrating. So when you integrate all the values that x takes for that given function, you're supposed to get a 1. Okay? Note, if x is a continuous random variable, pdf, which can also be denoted as f of x, over the interval x2 less than x less or equal to x squared, uh, x2 again, then... Or in short, in the case where you have a probability like this, given that kind of interval where a is less than x less or equal to b, okay, you're supposed to integrate. And your limits will be a to b, okay? Your large number there and your smaller number there. Then you integrate f of x, okay? Now, what this simply means is, we know that probability is just equal to area under the curve. So you might be given a, uh, curves, Something like this. So for you to find the probability, let's say, between A and a B, it's just a matter of integrating this part. So let's say this was a function, okay? This was a Y function. Now, they've asked you to find the, the probability between A and a B. So for you to find the probability between A and B, you just need to integrate this function, and your limits will be A and B. By using the limits A and B, you're trying to find the area in between. And this area in between is the one that you're referring to be the probability. Okay, so the area under the curve is equal to probability. So now, uh, one thing that you need to understand, under continuous random variables, if you're looking for values, probability A is less than X, less or equal to B. It's just the same as probability A is less equal to X, less than B, or probability A less, less than X, less than B, or probability a is less than x less or equal to b, okay? Or probability A is less or equal to x less or equal to b. So, for continuous random variables, so long you've been given these two intervals, despite the sign that they're going to use here, you're going to treat them to say these are your endpoints or your limits, okay? Despite the signs, it's different from discrete. From discrete, if you say A is less than x, meaning that A is exclusive, but for continuous random variables, if you say a less than x less or equal to b, meaning that these are your, uh, your limits, meaning that you need to integrate between b and a. I'm, uh, I'm sure this is clear. Okay. So, if f of x is a PDF of a continuous random variable x, defined over the interval from negative infinity up to positive infinity. Then, the cumulative distribution function, CDF. So, remember, for, for the discrete random variable, we are finding the cumulative distribution, okay? The cumulative distribution just by adding, okay? When x was equal to 1, when x is equal to 2, you just add 1 plus 2. You get those probabilities. Then to find the, uh, the cumulative distribution when x is equal to 3, you add when x is equal to 1 and when x, when x is equal to 2. Okay? And when x is equal to... When x is equal to 2. So, for the CDF now of a continuous random variable, you are supposed to integrate. Okay? You integrate from negative infinity up to positive x, depending the numbers that you have, or the random variable, how it has been defined, okay? Or well, that given function, which is f of t, then you differentiate, uh, you integrate with respect to t, okay? So, note that if x is a continuous random variable with pdf, f of x, and cdf, capital f of x, then we can, so, in the case when they give you 
the CDF, okay? When they give you the CDF, then they want you to come up with a PDF. You just differentiate. Is what this simply means. For you to get a PDF, when you've been given the CDF, you just differentiate the CDF, okay? Then, when they give you the CDF, for you to get the PDF, when they give you the PDF, for you to get the CDF, you anti-differentiate, which is just the integrate, okay? So, when they give you, a, when you have a PDF to get a CDF, you integrate. When you have a CDF to get a PDF, you differentiate, okay? So, I have an example with me here. Now, you might ask, like, how am I going to know that this is a discrete and this is continuous? Okay? So, the most important thing is to note how they are defining their random variable. Is to note how the random variable has been defined. Sometimes, they won't give you the intervals. But we know that so long they are talking about something which can be counted, that's a discrete. And how are we going to approach discrete uh, random variables questions? For discrete, you are supposed to, to be adding. Okay, you use the summation. But in the case where you are dealing with continuous random variable, you are supposed to, to integrate. Okay, so now this is a continuous random variable. So the moment you see a continuous random variable, when they give you a PDF, then they want you to come up with a CDF. Meaning you are integrating. Okay. So, in this case, you have a PDF which is f of x of a continuous random variable. X, uh, k is equal to x squared. Taking the values of negative 1 less equal to x less 2. Now, find the value of the constant k, find the CDF of x, and find the probability of 0 less or equal to x less or equal to 1. Okay. So, to start with, to find the value of the constant k, one thing that you need to understand is that when I integrate this PDF, because I know for me to get a CDF, uh, when I integrate all the values that the random variable has been defined for that given probability or that given PDF, I'm supposed to get uh, a 1. Okay? From here, when I integrate the PDF, to all the random variables that have been assigned to this PDF, I'm supposed to get a 1. Okay? So, meaning that when I integrate this function that I've been given here, x, uh, k x squared, when I integrate this to these uh, values of x which have been assigned, negative 1 up to positive 2, I'm supposed to, I'm supposed to have a 1. Okay? So, to find the value of the constant, the first example that we solved, we're trying to find the value of c. And we try to find the probabilities by adding, adding, adding for us to find the value of C. But in this case, we are integrating. But we, are need, uh, we need to equate our integral to 1. Okay? So we are saying this PDF f of x to all the values that have been assigned of x is supposed to get a, a 1. So we have values from negative 1 up to 2. So I've said for, C, uh, for, for continuous random variables, for continuous random variables, the signs doesn't matter. Whatever you've been given, you take them to be your limits. So from negative 1 up to 2, k x squared dx, when you integrate this, you get it to 1. k is the constant. You can take it outside. You have a k there. Then you have uh, limits negative 1 up to 2, x squared dx is equal to 1. Then when you try to integrate x squared, you get uh, x3 over 3. Integrating is just to add the 1 there, then the denominator, which is the summation here, you bring it down there. So, 2 plus 1, you have a 3, then the 3 comes down there. Then your limit is 2 to negative 1. Then you equate it to 1. Then you substitute. When there's x, you put 2. So, you have 2 to the power 3 over 3 minus this limit, which is negative 1 to the power 3 over 3. Then 2 to the power 3, it's 8 over 3 minus negative 1 to the power 3 is just negative 1 over 3. Negative, negative, positive. 8 over 3 plus 1 over 3, the denominator are the same. You can just add the, the numerators. 8 plus 1, you have a 9. 9 divided by 3, you have a 3. So you have k3 is equal to 1. To find the value of k, divide by 3, then this side by 3. So you have k is equal to 1 over 3. Okay? You have k is equal to 1 over 3. So you found the value of k. So meaning that when you try to substitute... This given function, where there's k, you put 1 over 3, you, and you try to integrate, it will give you this point. Is that the question? Okay. 
Yes, is that a question? I'm just asking if you may repeat on Sunday by the way. I might do it. I mean, finding the value of k. Finding the value of k, you may kind of repeat. You are breaking. Oh, I was breaking. Okay. So what I'm saying is, for the CDF, ah, for the continuous random variable, if you want to calculate the value of k, it's just a matter of integrating. Then you equate it to one. So, depending on the function that you've been given, k x squared, we are trying to find the value of k. The k is a constant number. So, you put the k outside. You can take it to outside. Then you remain with x squared. Then when you try to integrate x squared, this x squared becomes x to the power 3 over 3. Then you have this limit, 2 and negative 1. Okay? Then when you try to substitute, where there's x, you put 2 to be 2 to the power 3 over 3, which is 8 over 3. When you put negative 1 here to be negative 1 to the power 3, which you still remain to be negative 1 over 3, then negative, negative, it will give you a positive. 8 over 3 plus 1 over 3, it will give you 9 over 3. Then 9 divided by 3, it's a 3. So you have 3 times k is equal to 1. Then to find the value of k, just divide by 3, both sides. So 3 by 3, there are cancels. Then 1 divided by 3, you have 1 over 3. So the value of k is equal to 1 over 3. Is that okay? Is that okay? Yes, yes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. So now let's try to find the CDF. How are we going to get the CDF of continuous? Yes, yes, yes. I'm clear now. Okay, now. okay, thank you, thank you. So for the CDF, which is capital F of X, we are saying we are supposed to integrate, okay, from the least random variable that we have to X. You always put the X for the CDF of a continuous random variable. I repeat, if you are calculating the CDF or the continuous random variable, you take the list of the interval that you've been given and your upper limit will always be x. I know from that limit, uh, interval that you've been given, the upper limit is 2. But for CDF, if you're calculating the, C, uh, the CDF of a, random, of a continuous random variable, random distribution, you're supposed to put a x. Then, that given th uh, function that you have, f of x, where there is x, you can denote it with any other letter. Just to try to distinguish between this x and that x which has been uh, substituted. So in this case, I've just put a t. Okay? My function of f of x was k x to the power 2. And we found the value of k to be 1 over 3. So now my x squared, in this case, has been not denoted by t to the power 2. Okay, t squared. So that I try to substitute with the value of x there. I repeat, for the CDF or the continuous random distribution function, you always your limits will always be your list of, from the given interval to the upper limit, which is your x. Okay? So when you try to integrate here, 1 over 3, which is constant, you can take it out outside. Then you have negative 1 to the power x. Then you remain with t squared dt. So when you try to integrate this function with respect to t, it will just be t to the power 3 over 3. So if you want, you can even put a k there. So it, you, def, uh, you integrate with respect to k. Okay. So when you do that, when you do that, it will be t to the power 3 over 3, x and negative 1. Okay. Is that a question? So, when you try to substitute where there's x, where there's t, you put x, it will be x to the power 3 over 3. Then where there's t, you put negative 1, it will be negative 1 to the power 3 over 3. x to the power 3 over 3, it will remain x 3, x to the power 3 over 3. Negative 1 to the power 3, just negative 1 over 3. Negative, negative, positive, 1 over 3 there. Denominators are the same. Then you can try to add the, the numerators. So it will just be x3, x to the power 3 plus 1. Okay? Then, when you try to multiply there, it will be, this one multiply with the numerator, it will remain x3, 
uh, plus 1. Then 3 multiplied by 3, you have a 9. So this is just the same as 1 over 9, x3 plus 1. So this becomes your CDF or the cumulative, the CDF of your continuous random uh, distribution. What this simply means is, this is the general uh, formula in short. So in case you want to find the probability when x was equal to 1, okay, in case you want to find the probability that x is equal to 1, you just go to your CDF here and substitute when there's x, put a 1. So 1 to the power 3, it's 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 2 multiplied by 1 over 9, it will just be 2 over 9. Okay? So this becomes your function of the CDF. So remember, every time when you're integrating the CDF, you're supposed to take your limit, which is the least of the interval that you've been given. From the interval that you've been given, in the upper case, supposed to be the upper limit is supposed to be x. Okay, then from that given function f of x, where there's x, just try to put another number so that you don't uh, make a mistake when you're trying to substitute between that upper limit, which is x, and the x for that given function. Okay, so our CDF in short can be something like this. Since in this case our random variable was from negative 1 up to 2, it will take up this CDF. Anything greater or equal to 2 will be equal to 1. So in short, if you want to prove, just do this. When you put a 2 here, where there is x, 2 to the power 3, it's 8. 8 plus 1, 9. 1 over 9 multiplied by 9, it will give you 1. Okay? So in short, when you have a CDF, when you substitute that upper limit from the given interval, okay? When you try to substitute that upper limit from the given interval, from the CDF that you have, you're supposed to get a 1. Okay? Then any values x greater than 2, it will give you a 1. Then, since here we had negative 1, so this simply means that any value where x is greater, where x is less or equal to negative 1, it will give you 0. Okay, so this is what it simply means. Uh, as a graph, it will be something like this. If you try to plot, when x is equal to 2, you get your function, which is 1. So anything greater than 2, it will still be 1, like this. Then when your x is negative 1, it will be 0. Okay, so you have something like this. Now, to find the probability that 0 is less than x, less or equal to 1. To find the probability that 0 is less than x, less uh, or equal to 1. You have 0 to 1. Two approaches that you can use here. You can use your, your f of x. You integrate that given function, which is 1 over 3, the value of k. 1 over 3 x squared. You integrate it, since your limit is 0 to 1. Okay? So, which is 1 over 0 there, 1 over 3 x squared dx. You can take 1 over 3, which is the constant outside. Then you have the limit 0 to 1. You remain with x squared. You try to integrate x squared. You get x to the power 3 over 3. Then you try to substitute. When there's x, you put 1. It will be 1 over 3, 3. 1 over 3. This, it will just be 1 over 3. When you substitute 0, it will just be 0. So 1 over 3 and 1 over 3 there. When you try to multiply, it will give you 1 over 9. Okay? So if you want to find the probability... By using the given function, just integrate. Depending with the, prob uh, the interval of the probability that you've been given, those will be the intervals that you're going to use when integrating. Or if you want, you can use your PDF, uh, your CDF. So since our CDF is equal to 1 over 9, x to the power 3 plus 1. So for me, to find the probability that x, that 0, is less than x, less or equal to 1. In short, I'm trying to find the probability that f of 1 subtract f of 0. Remember, if you're using a CDF, which is cumulative, when you say f of 1, meaning that you are all, you are considering the values from 1 going back or to the left, okay? f of 0, meaning you're considering all the values from the negative up to uh, 0, okay? So, you can go to your function, which is your CDF in this case, where there's x put 1, okay? So when you put 1 here, it will be 1 to the power 3, 1 to the power 3, which is 
1. 1 plus 1, 2. 1 over 9 multiplied by 2, it will be 2 over 9. Okay? Which is this. When f is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, by using the CDF, where there's x, I'll put a 0. 0 plus 1 is just 1. 1 over 9 multiplied by 1. It is just 1 over 9. Then when I try to subtract here, 2 over 9 over, uh, subtract 1 over 9. Common denominators, then you just subtract the numerators. 2 minus 1, I'll get a 1 over 9. So either you use this approach or use that approach, you still get the same answer at the end of the day. Okay? Is there any question so far? So, uh, just a quick reminder. How do you think that you need to pay? Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Uh, if you have a CDF, if you have a uh, CDF, you want to get a PDF, okay? Just use this. I'm sure this will be helping. If you have a CDF, you want to get a PDF, differentiate this CDF, okay? Then if you have a PDF, then you want to get a CDF, integrate that CDF. This only applies when you've been given a continuous random variable. Okay, you are saying that uh, I repeat where I was getting when I was where, when I was substituting one. Yes. Yes. How you got, How you got two, two over, nine. over nine? So I'm saying, like in this case, I'm trying to use my CDF, right? So for the CDF, these signs doesn't matter. You just consider the limits. Okay. So my f of one subtract my f of zero. So my f of one, I'll go to the seed my CDF. My CDF was this. Where there's x, I'll put 1. So 1 to the power 3 is just 1. 1 plus 1, 2. 1 over 9 multiplied by 2. It will give me 2 over 9. Right? Hmm? Yes. Or maybe you're getting something okay. different. Okay. No, I found, I found the, same. the same. Okay. Then when my x is equal to 0, I'll do the same. Where there's x, I'll put a 0. 0 to the power 3, 0. Plus 1, 1. 1 over 9 multiplied by 1 is just 1 over 9. Which is this 1 over 9. Then when I try to subtract, it's 1 over 9. Like that. So, um, we just need to be, you know, to be very much careful. Remember, for discrete, you have a PDF and a CDF, which is cumulative distribution function. And how we get the... Uh, CDF for R, uh, when we've been given a discrete distribution, we just need to add, we get the summations. Then for continuous random variables, for random, uh, continuous distribution, for us to get the CDF, we just need to integrate. Okay? So, when they give you a PDF, then you want to get a CDF under continuous. Remember, when you're dealing with discrete, there's nothing like integrating. But when you're dealing with continuous, values which cannot be counted, you integrate. Then when you'll be given a PDF to, to, to find the CDF, PDF to CDF, you differentiate. You integrate. Then CDF to PDF, you differentiate. Okay? So, I have an exercise here. Okay, let's make it a, a homework. Okay, I've even started solving. Okay. Yeah, so here's the question. It reads, the distribution function of a random variable x and in this question, I guess it even came during our final exam. This same question. Yeah. So the distribution function of a random variable x is given by... So we have a CDF, right? Which is the capital F of x is the CX squared, where you have values from 0 up to 3. 1. In case anything greater than a 3, you experience a 1. Okay? Then, the probability that x is equal to 0... Uh, when the probability of x is equal to 3 will be 0. So, when you are looking at uh, continuous random variables, when you are looking at continuous random variables, what you are supposed to say is that uh, you are using intervals. Okay? So, in the case where you have been given a point under continuous random variables, in the case where you have been given a point, what is the probability that x is equal to 2 under continuous probability? the answer will always be zero. Because for continuous, you need to integrate. In short, what I'm trying to say is, 
in the case where you've been given a function, something like this, okay? You've been given a function, something like this. Then they ask you to say, what is the area when x is equal to a? You can't find area at a point, okay? When area at a point, every time it will give you zero. I'm sure you're able to understand. So this comes under continuous random variables. Okay. So I'm going to upload this document in the group. Then please try to answer so that you can try to help each other. Last time the work that I gave you, no one has even submitted. Though some people promised, no, we'll send the answers but up to now. So there's nothing that we can do in case you don't understand. We'll just be moving ahead because I can't see like how, like how, how you are getting these things. If it's to slow down or maybe to repeat, something like that. So I'll be able to tell if you guys are responding. When I give you an exercise, you try to respond. Mm -hmm. I understand we are all busy, but I'll try to find time so that I can try to go through the same work. Then at the end of the day, I even try to prepare in case I fail to respond to individuals. But I prepare some answers so that even yourself, you can try to mark yourself to see like, okay, how much you understand the given topic. In the group, I've sent a document for, is it to trash it one? Yeah, basically, it's probability. So just try to find time. Go through the questions, see how much you understand the topic. Okay? Okay, if we don't have questions, then we can quit tonight. Thank you very much for your time. It's have we done the density function. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir.